Hello, everyone, and welcome to Zoom O'Clock with your host, Tessie Anthony de Nassau. Today's guest is a very interesting and innovative lady from the UK, Emma Kay, the co-founder of WalkSafe. Hi, Emma. How are you? Hi, I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful. Thank you so much for your time and your busy schedule. I know that you had a BBC recording only a few hours ago in Richmond Park. Um, I know that you have a four-month-old daughter, uh, which is almost the same age as my son, Theodore. So I know how busy you are in your private life as well. And um, creating so something so incredible uh, to keep the ladies safe in the UK as well is definitely a topic I wanted to learn more about. So I asked you very kindly to join me on my podcast. Let me introduce you very briefly for the audience on our YouTube channel video and also on our podcast channels, Spotify, Apple Podcasts and all major uh, podcast channels. So Emma Kay is the co-founder of WalkSafe and her impassionate social media posts following the murder of, very sadly, Sarah Everett, which made world news, meant the free app was downloaded over half a million times in just two weeks. The pregnant mother of one, so you were pregnant at the time when, um, when you started this, is determined to fund the app so it will remain free to women and other vulnerable groups. A former beautician, Emma came up with the idea of the app at dinner with her extended family after describing her own experience of gender harassment and what she felt would help. Fortunately, her brother-in-law is a technology expert and he was able to devise the first generation WalkSafe app. Emma describes the WalkSafe app as the app that shouldn't have to exist, but as the daughter of a policeman, she has a pragmatic approach to women's safety and the WalkSafe app is testimony to that philosophy. Wow, Emma, um, I have so many questions for you. Let me start off with what is the app about and how does it work? Well, they, what it's about, we just said, but what, how does it work? Of course, of course. Thank you so much. I'm just so um, happy to be here and talking with you. It's a great honor. So thank you. I think your podcast is amazing and everything you stand for is great. Um, so our app, um, as we said, we uh, really feel that it should be free to everyone. We believe that no one should have to pay for safety. Um, human, uh, safety is a basic human right that we all deserve to walk down to the street uh, on the streets um, safely and live our lives without threat to fear. Um, so our app has multiple safety features, but the key piece to our app and what makes us really different to all the other apps out there is we use real police crime data that we get from the police API every month. And what that does is it allows our users to be able to spot trends and really understand where the recent crime hotspots are within that area. So we believe knowledge is power and we want our users to feel informed and, like I said, empowered when they're out. So if they know what recent crime has taken place and where, um, that enables them to make safer decisions when they're out and about. Absolutely. No, I totally agree with you. You know, I, I as we were preparing for the podcast, um, I also told you about my experience um, when I was walking down the streets in the evenings, you know, either after a drink or after a late work day. Uh, it would have not been a surprise to see me with a key in my hand. And I think London specifically now, I know that we have a, a pandemic of of harassment in the streets all over the world. But London has definitely caught the attention of many, many media outlets around the world. Tell me a bit about that. How is it going in London at the moment? Like you said, we are facing an epidemic of violence against women and girls. Um, it has just been exhausting and heartbreaking that almost every every week there's another poor girl that's gone missing there's been you know another murder we've just it's just been relentless um we need more to be done um after the case of Sarah Everard the police have been called into question um the handling of it has not been great at all and there's been a lot of mistrust in the police 
Um, and quite rightly so, it was awful what happened and it, it needs to be investigated. So at the moment, what we're all calling for is the violence against women and girls to be placed as a strategic requirement. So it actually gets the funding of resources that it really deserves. So putting it at that same level as like counter-terrorism, which is what we need right now, because we're undersourced, we're, we, we've got half of our police forces have been cut around. I mean, even my local area, I don't have a local police station anymore. There's less police on the streets. Um, we really need action. And the issue we're facing is there's been a lot of victim blaming. You know, the, the response has been carry a rape alarm or, you know, we need more lighting, but it's bigger than that. It's not down to us just to keep ourselves safe. And that really frustrates me because although I've got an app and although I'm petitioning for safer streets and I want more to be done, at the same time, like you said, Tessie, I've been a victim of uh, assault and I, I I was taking all the necessary precautions at that time and I, I there was nothing more I could have done about it this, this shouldn't be normalized and I really want widespread change and I really hope they can look at the victims bill because at the moment victims are not being supported enough we're not our rape um convictions at an all-time low um yeah our reportings at an all-time high it's just no what it, it's all we just need so much change and we need it now so you were saying that you're the daughter of a policeman right how does that yes. make the father feel right because you are a girl and you also are the mother now of a little girl what what how does he handle this? Because you say there's a mistrust in the police force as well. So how, how can we kind of like stop this vicious circle of, you know, mistrust and miscommunication and everything? Because, you know, as your dad, there's also good people there. So how do, how do we get this turned around in your opinion? A hundred percent. And I think it's always really important to caveat that with that are people who are striving for safer streets. And I've been fortunate enough to have been brought up around some really excellent police officers who've done excellent work in the field and who, you know, work tirelessly to create change. And they're just as devastated by this as we are. Um, I think there's just a lot of frustration everywhere. I think that um, police would obviously like more funding and they would like, um, I think they, yeah, I think at the moment we, we need more funding in that area in order for them to be on the streets, in order for them to be doing a better job, in order for change. I think they they need more in that sector. I think he feels frustrated. I think that when he was a police officer, there were a lot more police about, there were a lot more police stations open. And obviously times have changed. Um, it would obviously be different um, people coming in and out of... Um, um, in Parliament uh, has caused um, a lot of shuts, uh, closures, like I said, with um, the stations. And I, I think, uh, yeah, I think he just feels frustrated. And I think he understands that being a woman, he's from the age of 13, um, he's understood that these things have been happening. And I think as a parent, you probably feel quite powerless. There's only so much you can do. Um, and we have house rules at home. So he was instill exactly like you said, when you're walking alone and you feel nervous, keys in the hand, you don't listen to music loud in your ears. Um, you're aware of your surroundings, well-lit streets, look after your drink. If you go out, if you're going home, travel with people, try not to be alone. And I grew up thinking all these things were normal, that everyone thought the way I did. And it wasn't until I started up WalkSafe that I realized that, um, not everyone does and it, it, we all feel in fear but I think there are some steps that we take and have to take in order to keep ourselves safe and we shouldn't have to the burden shouldn't just be on us but we have to right now until things change uh, we all just have to be more aware it, it's a sad, sad sad fact of life at the moment so tell me a bit more about the app. So you say that there's real police data included in the app. How does it, how, what is the user journey? Um, when, if I would download the app, right? I'm to the UK now. 
what would I see? How does it work? And what if something would happen? Does the app also assist in some way or another to get me back to safety in case something does happen? Good question. So um, we've got two sides. We've got our walk safe map. So that's the police data that you were talking about. And you can zoom in and zoom out of that. And we are only UK based at the moment. So we can only see UK data. Um, however, you can see where recent crimes such as mugging, such as assault and knife crime has taken place. And what that enables the user to do is, for instance, before I go to the shops, my little girl, um, my son, what I can do is I can plan my route and choose to take a safer route. So there's always a few paths around me that have had a lot of crime. I'm not going to take them down that route. I'll pick a safer route. Um, so that's there to help um kind of prevent mm -hmm. before you go out your house yeah. and then you've got our safety functions we've got tap safe so tap safe is when you're walking alone you're feeling nervous you can pull out tap safe and you can press the tap safe button and that will automatically alert your loved one and it will say emma's feeling nervous check in on her if anything should happen to me and i stop tapping that button and that phone drops out of my hands my loved one will get an automatic alert of my last known location and saying you need to check in on her if everything's fine and i can walk out of wherever i am and i feel safe i can simply come out of it and it will let my loved one know she's okay we also have our home feature as well which is before you go out again trying to take preventative measures as well you can set your time of arrival you think you're going to be home and what that will do is at that time if you're home great and it will let your loved one know you're home if not it tells your loved one to check in on you and again it will provide your last known location yeah that is really really good because you know Often, and, and I have seen um, while I was in the military and, and did quite a lot of other things for safety uh, for women around the world. And it's true that when something really happens, you it's difficult to kind of like make yourself known then because often in these situations, you, it's already too late, right? So having that prevention method that, as you say, using a tapping um, just for people to know that you are feeling a bit uncomfortable. And also just the fact being on the phone, talking to someone, the perpetrators or trader um, often just back off by themselves because they know that you are, um, that someone is listening in already. So um, really, really good. So you, you said um, half a million times download. Can you share how many times um, do you have data of how many times the tapping was used in that time that it has been? How old is the app now in, in total? So the app's over a year old now. And actually, um, good point about the tapping. So we, my latest time I checked, my last time I checked my data, we had seen that the tap safe function had been used 20,000 times in the last six months. So that's 20,000 times someone's felt unsafe and nervous and gone into that feature, um, which is an awful thing to feel. I, it's bittersweet. I love that my app's there and it can help people and they've got the comfort of knowing if something's there, should they need it? But at the same time, it just breaks my heart that people are walking down the street and feeling nervous that they've got to let a loved one know that they're feeling scared. Um, we do actually have our new app version coming out in January. And we are creating a bit more of an inclusive app. So we'll have a big SOS button at the top of the page and it will be a real time safety sat nav. So you can follow someone in real time on their journey. And I'm really hoping that the new developments that we are working on to make it even more user friendly will be even better for our users and hopefully really help. Um, I mean, even if it helps one person, in one bad situation then we've done something right so that's what we're hoping for to help more people so twenty-three thousand cases of tapping where, where people felt unsafe uh in the last six months is it mostly women i would assume or do you have as well men so males uh using the app as well yes it, it is both i'd say 75 percent women um yeah it just it's awful 
it just makes me feel so like I said I just wish the app didn't have to exist but sadly there just is a place for it in the world right now it, it just like you said earlier things aren't getting better and people are needing the comfort and the reassurance of something in their pocket that they feel they can use should they need it absolutely no, I think it's really important to say that that it is 75% women, but that also that it is 25% men, because uh, certainly in the military, I have seen that rape and sexual harassment does not just happen to women, but also to men and also to men by men and to men by women. So um, it's good to know that there's an app out there for both genders. But for all people, no matter how you define yourself and your own gender. Um, so, yeah, very, very good. I, I think it's really fantastic. Definitely also because I have two teenage sons. They are mostly yeah. in the UK. And, um, you know, I certainly know when they go and, and run some errands for me, for example, going to, let's say, Sainsbury's to get some milk or whatever for me. Um, because I want to give them as well the education of independence, right? Some, some, some point I need to trust them that they can go and get some milk, right? Um, but having something like that will definitely ease as well a mother's heart when you know that your child is outside, no matter what the age of the child is, right? A hundred percent. And I think that's the reason why our app's been quite popular is because we always say to people, we don't track you. You've got to be able to go into our app and basically open up that feature with someone else using the same feature. And that's an agreement that you're both using it. So unless you're in that app using that feature, you know, it, it, we don't track. So it's important for people to know that, especially I think young teenagers, they don't want their mum thinking they're watching what they're doing all the time via our app. That's not how it works. So I think parents really enjoy our app for that reason, that they can set the home safe feature before they go out. Um, you need to be back by 12. Um, if they're back by 12 and you know the mum checks in, it's all great. Um, so I think, like you said, our, our features are used very much so with, with parents of children at the ages that yours are. That is really fantastic. I saw as well um, in the communication that you shared with me, um, you mentioning that knife crime rose over 25% following the last lockdown. Why, in your opinion, then, why is that so? Is that because of COVID? Is that because of um, the job of the, the loss of jobs? Um, what is happening, in your opinion, that this is happening? What was really staggering was actually, I think I live in a very nice suburban family area. And I actually had a fatal knife attack that took place at the bottom of my road, which is unheard of and that happened a few months ago and it took place at 4 p.m when children were walking to and from school on a Monday afternoon mm -hmm. and it was so shocking I mean I, I couldn't even really believe it had taken place and the one thing that I've definitely learned over the course of this year is no one's exempt no area no person no time it, it, all these instances they don't happen in the dark they don't have they're happening every day day in day out and I think there's been, we work with a lot of police officers within WalkSafe. We've got some ex-Met um, who specialise in victim support and a detective. And we've got a crime analysis who works with the Met as well. And they predicted it going up. And they said that the issue's been is there's been a lot of people at home, um, like you said, loss of jogs, a lot of pent up anger, a lot of people feeling very frustrated and where some perpetrators would have gone out and continued doing these sorts of things. For instance, um, someone like um, the case of Sarah Everard, um, the man who committed that murder, he, had, he was flashing before he raped and killed her. So these people, they escalate. So they start off with flashing, then they move on to groping, then they move on to, it, it all gets worse. And I think what happened when COVID happened was everyone was stuck in their houses, no one was going out. And I think a lot of that built up for a lot of people. And uh, talking with the experts that I have have said, it's quite scary we're, go we're going to be due a huge spike and that's exactly what's happened that combined with the fact that again we've got um not as many police on the streets 
um, it, it's all a bit of a recipe for disaster at the moment. And the one thing that we're all trying to do is try to take personal safety into our own hands and trying to make sure that we're just keeping our wits about us. Um, like you said, I, I, I think that it's a, a big problem. And with knife crime as well, I think oh, we've got a lot of... Um, also with COVID, there's been a lot of things shutting down. So, we, you know, youth groups and things that used to be open for young people to be able to go and have some um, you know, time with their friends. There's just been a lot of um, closures. There's not been as many places for people to go and hang out. Um, again, like you said, poverty. It's just, it, I just feel like it's just one thing after another at the moment. So I really hope that... Um, we can take some necessary steps there has been a lot of knife amnesty boxes around London where people can go and drop off weapons um and once they're in the box no one can take them back out and then obviously once a week those knives are collected um I really hope we can start to do a bit more education within schools and yeah we, we I think we've just got a long road ahead of us Oh, that's the first time I hear of these boxes. Do you think that it's going to be actually used by, by people who have these weapons at home, that they will just say, I bring them to a box and then I'm not going to get them? Back? Do you know what? They actually have been quite popular. There are a few around London. Um, there are also people who go and pick up knives um, at the moment. There's been a couple of... Um, there's one guy called Courtney Barrett and he's called the knife man and he goes around certain areas and he picks up weapons. He says to them to be at a certain time, a certain place, he will take them from you and they discard of them in a safe way. Um, there has been a rise of that at the moment because it, it's been such a big problem. And I think that the one thing that I've learned is there's been quite a few young people who have been taking kitchen knives and they actually say that's become a really big problem. Um, young people getting uh, ones from home so um i think it's a it's it it's not um the best solution but it is a good solution that people are doing at the moment and it's it's being used so yeah. it's great that people are able to do it that sounds crazy but yes you know whatever works um but for me i'm really really a bit baffled right to not really know how to think of it and just it is it is really scary and um, I have heard of incidents as well when you say you are in, in, in a good neighborhood uh, we as well we live in a very good neighborhood in London and there as well um, just a street away you know we had a lot of break-ins now so I installed cameras in my house we had a lot of uh, stabbings as well in the middle of the street and uh, we had as well, um, I heard of a friend, her father in the Boltons, which is a really, really good area. Um, there as well, there was an incident where an older man on the front door was just, uh, his, his throat got cut. Um, not, not now, but I think that was a year ago at the beginning of the pandemic or something like that. Um, so all areas as you say, no one is safe anymore. And I think it's also by people losing their jobs and having these gang wars, as we all know in the UK, there's a lot of gang wars. I think these, these gang people are coming down now because you know there's nothing to take anymore. If people lose their jobs, they go to the wealthy areas, right? To get to what they need, and um, yeah, so I think now with the next lockdown just being just there again, sadly, I was supposed to fly um, in a few days to the UK, and that might be cancelled now. I think we are really to brace ourselves, right? And I know, I know, I'm dreading it. I, 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 I hope for everyone's sake that um, with all the jabs, I don't know um, where you are, but in London obviously we're doing a lot of jab rollouts we've got our boosters due and I still think with the new variant we probably will be but it's it's a shame but at the same time we, we need to do what we need to do I suppose to protect everybody um but I agree I recently I had an incident myself where someone had flashed me only a few weeks ago um at my property 
and was really verbally abusive. And I always say to my users and followers that I think it's really important that we log these things to help prevent these things from happening to other people. So I know it's really hard and sometimes going through that process of talking to the police and logging it, it can be, it can feel like another job. But we always stress here that as long as you can try and find some support and the police should be able to offer you some support at the time when you process that, um, it, it should help, um, especially if there's any evidence or anything with CCTV where they can help um, make sure, you know, they're keeping on top of these perpetrators so they don't continue to escalate. So I think that's all we can do at the moment is keep logging these things. 100%. So we have run out of time already way long ago. So uh, I need to wrap it up. So much <laughs> no, and it's such an important topic, isn't it? So um, how, so one thing is walk safe. The app is on Apple, on the Apple shop, I would assume, and Android as well for people to uh, freely download. Yes, Perfect. exactly. Free download, no in-app subscriptions. So yeah. Perfect. So if you're listening and want something good and vital for Christmas, please download the app for you and your loved ones for sure um, to keep safe if you're living in the UK. And then um, if people want to get in touch with you, you talked about the victims bill as well and also about maybe creating a new campaign, kind of like to pressure the government and our leaders to do make sure that there is more people in the armed forces again, recruitment and all of these things. How can they reach you? So I, my personal handle was Emma K Walksafe and my Walksafe account is walksafe.io. And I would love to hear from anyone if they've got any questions. And we've also got our podcast called Talk Safe, where we discuss all of these sorts of safety issues with leading experts. And Tessie, I'd love to have you on mine. So perhaps we can, um, you could join me on Talk Safe one day. Yeah, that sounds great. I happily return the favor because I know awesome. you're as curious as I am. And, it's, and I think podcast is such a good medium to just learn very fast about a topic um about important topics so um with pleasure we talk offline about that so dear emma my last question which has nothing to do or maybe for you but normally it it's just a question out of the blue that i ask all of my podcast guests to finish off the podcast what is a quote book or podcast that you have read listened or seen recently where you were like wow people should know about this um, so my, my one podcast I love, and I've loved it for years, and I think it, it always speaks to me is because I feel like I'm a mum, first and foremost, before anything. Um, there's a podcast called Happy Mum, Happy Baby. Mm -hmm. And what I love is it's all about leading women um, across the UK and any, well, I, think, I wouldn't say the world, I don't know where all of our guests have been from, but um, I love listening to mothers, working mothers, all mothers about their experiences. And it always gives me great comfort that even in the hard times or times where I'm juggling walk safe and babies, that there are other mums out there doing exactly the same thing. So check it out. I love it. Well, that's really nice. Yes, I will definitely check it out because I love podcasts. And my husband, he actually is the one that that got me the love to podcasts because he is a podcast addict. He's on it all the time. And uh, so, yeah, definitely we'll check it out. Thank you so, so much, Emma. Thank you for your time. And um, as always, for the ones listening and also looking at uh, the YouTube video right now, please do subscribe, rate, comment and share, because only like that can we really, really share interesting and timely topics such as this one to walk safe home in the UK with Emma. So thank you so much, Emma. Have a good thank afternoon. You. It's been wonderful. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Bye.